last minute arrivals. It's a great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to the fourth lecture in the Kenneth Frampton Endowed Lecture Series. As you probably all already know, for a school that claims to be quote unquote global, Ken is of course the most global of all of us, having for so long brought to our often still provincial attention the great work of many architects and scholars working and thinking around the world. In the last three years already, we have had the pleasure of hearing Johanny Palazma, Eduardo Suto de Mora, and Grafton Architects. Tonight, I'm delighted to introduce Angelo Bucci. Angelo is one of those architects that has the rare luxury of being deeply embedded and inspired by the city he's from and practices in, Sao Paulo, where he founded SPBR in 2003. As one of the most gifted uh, architects in the second generation of the Paulista School, Angelo came of age under the first generation of Sao Paulo-based architects, including Lina Bobardi, Paulo Mendes de Roca, and Villanova Artigas, who founded the Faculty of Architecture and Urbanism School in Sao Paulo. Prior, prior to founding his own firm, Bucci was also a partner of MMBB Architects, with which de Roca often collaborated. In looking at his already extensive body of built work, one can't help but feel a little jealous of the more forgiving climate, both in terms of temperature, of course, but also in terms of legal and code climate, it seems, which is so conducive to the beautiful rawness and simultaneously minimal and expressive detailing. And yet, Bucci's recent residential building in Lugano, Switzerland, shows his ability to pull it off in other contexts as well and is a great inspiration for how local specificity can be transcended through an always evolving body of work as it becomes more global. In parallel to his practice and setting a kind of feedback loop between practice and design research, Angelo is also a committed educator in his capacity at, of lecturer in the Faculty of Architecture and Urbanism at the Universidade de Sao Paulo, Brazil, where he completed his master's and PhD degrees. In the past decade, uh, Angelo has lectured extensively and been invited to teach at Harvard, MIT, EUAV, I don't know how to say it, in Venice, uh, University of Texas at Austin, Yale, ETH, and Zurich, amongst others, maybe Columbia, <laughs> in the future. And in 2011, Bucci was recognized with an honorary fellowship from the AIA. Please join me tonight in welcoming Angelo Bucci. Well, good evening. Uh, I should say good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good evening, my peers, architect, or I would prefer to say, I mean, to feel more comfortable. Good evening, my friends. Uh, it's really uh, an honor to be here. I mean, it could be, couldn't be a better place, a better school. I couldn't receive an invitation from a better, better person, Ken Frampton, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Amal, for the presentation. Well, thank you all. Uh, what I, I have to thank also, of course, the, my office people that working with me, uh, some uh, former students that are here, uh, and that uh, gave me this audience that I, I'm trying to feel uh, pretty much at home. No? I will start by, by showing you uh, a first work. It's like to take the Mr. Frampton's suggestion and start by showing a, a very small house that we designed in 2010, uh, in 2005, uh, for a city 
that it is close to Sao Paulo city. But I, I will try to be very fast in this first works and just say that this is what it was very challenging for us in this work was of course how steep is the site. So, and maybe the, the first thing that came to my mind was to create a way to build this house uh, trying to prevent a big movement of soil to construct, to, to have to build uh, huge retained walls. So we, we made this house by not changing anything in the topography. And there was one more condition that the street is in here. Actually, the site goes down until the beach that is here. And then we had to build the house from this point so it's almost 50% of uh, slope. It's very hard even to stand in the side. So it's a very raining place in Brazil. Uh, it's uh, also risky as construction because we, we have this risk of slope. And, but, and we, we decide to just place the house in three points, two columns in here, one in here. And we, we built this house uh, completely hanging these labs from the top to the bottom. But we, we built, uh, everything was casted, so we built from the bottom to the top, but the, the structure just would be uh, ready when we finished the whole thing. No, it's pretty much like an art, that uh, we had to finish the construction to have the whole thing stable. So, but this is the site some uh, pictures taken by Erieta Tali. <clears throat> I, I, just two photographers that I also have to thank, Erieta Tali and Nelson Kohn. <clears throat> uh, it's a place with an amazing view. We are right on the Capricorn Tropic. So it's a very rainy part of the country as well. So you can see in these pictures. And so the idea that the house just touched the ground in one point, there is one column. This is the site, uh, the way where we are is in here or again in here. So in between uh, two different beaches, but actually you can see three of them. So this, this plan that doesn't uh, work for anything, but I, I, I like very much because it shows the three points where the house touched the ground. And uh, that picture was taken in this column here where we have a staircase and arrived the ground. You can see that these labs almost uh, are completely free from the columns. These two labs doesn't touch the columns. Uh, except by this single point in here where uh, that was uh, actually very important to, to prevent the horizontal movement. <clears throat> so, and some images. Although the columns are like 10 meters high before touch the first slab, uh, we cannot see that they are like uh, in the middle of the trees and they disappear pretty much when we look from the beach. So the entrance is from the top. We have the, a swimming pool in between the two main beams, uh, and the swimming pool is pouring water in the other slabs like a reflecting pool. <clears throat> so this is the, in the east facade, we have uh, like a bristle that could be slide up and down and uh, to shade a little bit this facade that although it is east, is really, really tough, you no, know, the south. The, the sun in, in the east facade or the place. And, and the other ones are very protected by the house itself. So the house is, is very an uh, uh, aerial uh, uh, disposition no, of these labs. There are some, the, the way that we display the different floors uh, allowed us, for instance, to, to have the view 
of the beach uh, from any level, from any place. Uh, for instance, this is the back volume, but it is a little bit detached from the front one. So it, this is just one and a half meter, the difference from the bottom of this slab and this floor. But it gives the condition of front for this back volume as well. And, and there is one thing in, in this work that we were exploring, the lot of space that are not exactly inside or outside. We can, uh, a part of the house uh, has no glass. No, this is a part of our climate condition, but we try to explore. That, it, it seems very simple, but of course that we have to be free from some inheritance that are very strong, but I, I will comment it later. So I'd like to show you uh, th this first work like if I was showing a uh, kind of precedent, you know, how I start to my practice. And uh, also th there are some previous work that I'd like to mention very briefly. So this is my hometown. Uh, is uh, uh, so I'm not. Uh, I was not born in São Paulo city. I was born in this very small village, uh, and during uh, about ten years, uh, all the works that I had to do was my friends from my town that invite me to do some very small stuffs like this. That is a psychology clinic. That is a very, to me, it was very important because I test some ideas uh, after some previous work that I, I, I thought that I could do because uh, the experience of building in my town in a time that I was working for some others off in Sao Paulo, I, I was not able to go very often to the construction site. Uh, but I start to learn how the workers uh, uh, used to interpret it, uh, our drawings, uh, what they succeed trying to, to build, uh, some details that we work a lot, but we couldn't uh, get a good result, and some that to me seemed very complicated, but they were very skilled to, to, to do. So this first, uh, it was the first time that I, 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 I made the decision very rational that I could build a, a building by like five actions in the construction site. So the structure, two stone walls, a panel made in wood, uh, glass with no frame, and, and the floors, and that's all. And it was... Uh, very successful in a way, because we, and, and one thing that I'd like to mention, so this is a psychology clinic, and the, the psychoanalyst room is the only place actually closed. All the rest is in between inside and outside. So the, the, the whole building is a kind of gradient in between uh, the, the mid of the street and the psychoanalyst room. Uh, and this is, I, I, I will try to show you how I, I learn a little bit about, or I start to think, I, I took a lot of time to realize, uh, but I, I, I will try to show you. So, <clears throat> this is one more of those uh, early works. This one I, I, I designed uh, like in 98. Uh, it was finished in 2000. I was working in a previous office with three more partners. The office was called the MMBB. Uh, and this is a house for a, f uh, a friend of mine from my, my town, but in, in a different place, in a different town. So it is a house where I, one of the first time that I met a, a structural engineer that uh, made a very important difference in my life, Ibsen Uvo. Uh, 
because it's a guy that could make some works possible that I, I don't believe that I, I would be able to, to work in stuff like this if I, I had never met him. So he was the structure engineer in that first work. No, that first work, I think that it was possible because we had built this house before, because the structure worked in the same way, more or less, but this is very simple. I was very worried when I built this house, but uh, if I compare this, the, the, that one that I showed first with this, this is very easy to be done. So, but we had the same kind of uh, challenge because the structure is, is above the, 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 uh, the top uh, slab and hanging the, the, the floor slab. So we were worried about to finish the whole thing to keep the scaffold and, but it was very easy. I mean, it, it gave us like a, a encourage us to make the second one. No, that are actually different, but... So, and one thing that I like to say about this house is that it starts by a kind of adversity. Uh, I remember when I went to see the site that had a natural slope, and the previous owner of the site to like to make it uh, more money, he, he has to make it flat, completely flat. And so the neighbor on the back was about to fall down because they, they, they take out the, 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 the soil in a very bad way. So what I, I found, the, the natural slope was going up from the street to the back, like two, two meters, two meter and a half. But what we found was a flat site uh, that was like 50 centimeter above the ground, the, 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 the street. So the site is 15 meters wide, 30 meters deep, uh, 30 meters uh, long, and 50 centimeter of uh, soil, though it makes a volume that is 225 cubic meters of soil. So the reasoning that I, I, I wouldn't like to just to have that huge volume of soil spread out in the site in the way that doesn't, uh, was not interesting for no one. No one. And then the, the first reasoning was to, that I could uh, display that same volume uh, by building three different boxes, like three huge gardens, like three uh, big stones in the site. Uh, that would be the garden for the living room, for, for the patio, for the bedroom, and we did that. That's the reason why the beams were placed, just two beams on the roof, and, and why, in a way, this project started. You know? and so you can see here the three pieces that uh, can accommodate that volume of soil, <coughs> what we did. So there is one uh, thing that I, I like to explain because it seems a little bit odd, but uh, the, the two beams, this one cross the void of the patio and the other one is loaded all the time, uh, all, all its length. So this one that is crossing the void of the patio, uh, the structure engineer had a very challenging topic that is how to control the deformation in the edge of the cantilever because there was no load counterweighting that, uh, that point. And then uh, in, in, we always uh, have to pre like to have a water tank in, in, in these houses. But the, uh, as one thing that we do automatically, we place the water tank on the top of a column and I had did the same in this house. But when I, I, I first talked to the structure engineer, he asked me that it was a problem not have a, a load in here, and I asked him how many tons, in which position he would like to have, and we just displaced the water tank in, the, in a place that, so what seems like a very hard thing to do actually is relieving the structure in this house. So, but this is, 
So Mr. Frampton asked me to mention a little bit about what is called Paulista School. I don't know. Paulista uh, from Sao Paulo and the school. I, I, I never understood exactly the meaning of this expression. I, 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 to me, it's not so easy to find myself in this, but of course that I had uh, outstanding professors in this, this school. This is our School of Architecture. And, and more and more I realized uh, how the experience of being in this building impacted my process, uh, educational process to become an architect. Well, now I am a professor at this building. So I have been living here since uh, 83, almost uh, without interruption. So, but this building was inaugurated in 69. It was designed by a very important architect in Sao Paulo, Villanova Artigas, that was one of the founders of our architecture school that was founded in, in 1949. 20 years before the inauguration of this building. So he was the founder of the school, the architect who designed this building, and for sure one of our most important professors. So one way to describe this building, one way that I like to describe this building, again to mention the climatic condition, is that this is a doorless building. So that is one thing very easy to be said. but is different because it's not a regular building with no doors. It is a building that has no doors before to be designed. I mean, to not have doors was a kind of uh, concept of the building. So, and it had to be designed in a different way. So, and, and I'm very proud to say that we can live and study architecture in a country as Brazil, we were one of the most challenging stuff that we have to deal is the social inequality, uh, and we can live in a doorless house. So this is is very nice. But to to be able to design a doorless building, of course, that all the repertoire that we manage when we design, we inherit mostly from. Uh, European uh, history, you know, we, we inherit a vocabulary that uh, where the climatic uh, issue is completely different of that, of that one that we had to deal in Brazil. And then it's very hard to, to be free of this inheritance. So sometimes I, I believe that the, the, the most challenging thing in our activity is not what we don't know, but it is actually is to be free of the, the, the stuff that we, we know very well. So, uh, and to have a kind of criticism on, on our own knowledge. So, but this is a way to describe, you can see the light come from the, the, the ceiling and the building is very <clears throat> uh, easy to be understood. It could be described totally in this cross section. But I also would like to say that this building <clears throat> is a, for an architect that was uh, educated in my context. You no, know, I would say this building is a kind of temple for an architect from, from Sao Paulo. And as a temple, it was marked by a very uh, remarkable tragedy because uh, in the same year that this build was inaugurated, uh, we were under a dictatorship and just one month after the inauguration, Villanova Artigas was expelled from the school. So. Uh, so it is, in a way, I could say it's like the Parthenon, you know, where the, <laughs> the Athena uh, as a god was uh, kidnapped and, 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 and removed from the temple. Or <clears throat> uh, 
or I could say is also a temple as a pantheon, because uh, in my, I would say, my mythology, we have our gods in this temple. And maybe the, 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 the first god, I would say, could be Villanova Artigas. Uh, the, 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 the second one, or the two one that comes right after, and one could be the god to represent the archi, I mean the first part of our activity, and the second one, or the third one to represent this, the texture. So this one represent archi is a guy called Flavio Mota, and this, the, that one that represent tech texture. It's a very remarkable arc that for, in our, uh, for us, uh, Paulo Mendes da Rocha. So, and this school was found by this junction between arc and texture. Arc that came from the philosophy school, texture that came from uh, engineering school. So it was this merge that found our architecture school. And, and, and we have a third department at this school that is based in the activity that we do inside this building. That's called the designing uh, department. No? So uh, the, the idea is very simple, is very uh, as any other school, but it is uh, different uh, in, in its specificity. But I, I wouldn't say God as uh, someone that we have to follow with no, uh, with no questions. But in, in this way that I like to, 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 to honor those uh, important professors and the, the president that we inherit from this president. No, but uh, this building, I think that is very helpful if you are uh, uh, learning or working uh, in architecture. And not helpful because it's a model to be followed. So in this way, that uh, is not God. But uh, it is helpful in your everyday activity. You know, the whole ceiling. I know the, 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 all the measure by heart because the, the, the ceiling is a kind of rule. So it's 110 meters long by 66 meters wide. Uh, each each uh, light uh, that we have, natural light on the top, the, the square, is 2.75 by 2.75. The distance between columns 11 meters or 22 meters. So if you have a look in the cross section, if I want to think what means uh, a, a, a distance between floor and ceiling four meter high, I, I can find. If I, I want to find six meter high, I can find eight meters high, 12 meters high, 16 meters high. If I want to realize what means a space uh, that is uh, 22 meters long or 50 meters long, I can find the, all this uh, situation inside that building. So it's very helpful when you are in your everyday designing a building. So this is one thing that to me is very nice about to have this as a school of architecture. So this is, is not so relaxed every day. So this was an exhibition and it's not so crowded every day as well. But this picture, I really like to, to mention. I, I never met Villanova Artigas, but I, I learned from him. Uh, I, I actually, I have to say, this is a kind of building that can, you, you see, it, it embody a person. And I, I, nowadays, I feel as if I have had Villanova Artigas as my professor because this is a building that I, I feel that it talks uh, with us. Though in those sense that I said, but also it talks like uh, sometimes it just whisper, uh, very gentle, some suggestions, sometimes it can speak in a more, more loud voice, no more emphasized uh, lessons, or emphatic lessons. But in one uh, quotation uh, from Villanova Artigas 
That's why I like to show this picture because it's the best illustration that I've ever uh, met. Uh, he would uh, he he liked to say to the students that we should be able to design a building as a as a city, and to design a city as a building. So when I put this both picture together, to me it's uh, the perfect way to illustrate that quotation by Villanova Artigas. And I, although I never had him as my professor, of course that I'm all the time thinking in what I, I uh, he tried to express in the building in this kind of quotation. And so this is Sao Paulo downtown, again, not every day, so crowd as well. But <clears throat> so one of my very important precedent, of course, those, uh, uh, the architects, but the building itself was a kind of professor that I had. And, and uh, uh, one thing that is uh, very clear, uh, no, is uh, of course that the people that we admire, they are a kind of guideline in our lives, but uh, is uh, they are also a kind of uh, institution, you no? Know, like a building like this, maybe it's too institutional. What I, I believe that is able to provide like a breath of life to this uh, institution is, is the people living together. I mean, the, the, my colleagues at the architecture school were uh, what the most important thing I had during my time at the school. It, uh, it, it was by talking with them that I, I, I learned a lot about what I, I, I had to do, the way that we could start, and uh, the plan that we could do. So I, I wouldn't start my first office if not by the enthusiasm of my my colleagues at the school, no? So, and there, there uh, to talk one more time, I'm trying to be brief all the time, about this precedent. So, <clears throat> I also had the opportunity to, to meet Villanova Artigas, for instance, in this house, that I was called to, to uh, design a, a renovation in 96. It's a very small house with this Mondrian uh, floor that he designed in 56 uh, for a professor. So that was the original plan. And what we did is very simple. Everything is in here. So the house has this structure that uh, it's two columns on the front with this uh, concrete wall that make this cantilever like four and a half meter to this side. So, but the height is very generous and so the, the cantilever is not a problem. But you see that there is this uh, wall, uh, the same thing on the back and here there is no wall. So that's why he designed this truss uh, here to support uh, the, the, the ceiling where we don't have a wall. But the truss was built and collapsed. So I had all the plans of the house, and uh, that I, uh, the original plans. This house was calculated by Villanova Artigas. And, and uh, we no, nobody knew why it had collapsed. And then we start to make uh, some demolition and we, we found exactly the reason why the, 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 the piece collapsed. No, they, in this, uh, of course, this is, is very inclined, is 17, 17 tones uh, in the axis of the, the piece. So, but the most part goes horizontally and uh, just a small part comes down. And the beam here had not been built according to the plan. So the column was bending and then the, 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 the truss collapsed for this reason. And, uh, but we, we found, we fixed, 
and it was very easy to replace the piece there, and we did. So, and when we did that, uh, we, we made some more change. Though this is a kind of half-level living room, and there is a half-level garden there. So here there used to be a wall until this high. We remove, uh, but it's very uh, a simple intervention that I, I, I I, I did always think that we were like uh, honoring Villanova Artigas, no? So we, we open here to make clear uh, how the structure works. So here now you can see uh, both things. And so this was one more building that was important. So this is another opportunity that we had in, in the 2000 to make a, a remodelation in this building designed by Oscar Niemeyer. Actually, what we did was very simple, is just to change the air conditioning system. But the building, the change now to, to install that there was no any system. The building was closed for almost 20 years. And in 2000, uh, they decide to open for an exhibition. Uh, uh, and uh, this is amazing because it's 10,000 square meters. It's huge as an uh, exhibition space. So it's about three times more than that museum made by Lina Bobard. Uh, and, but I start to realize uh, a little bit uh, of Nehemiah working, also by thinking, by, by uh, knowing more profoundly the structural plans and everything. <clears throat> and this is the building. It's amazing because the ground level, so these this windows is two meters, the diameter is really uh, big. But when you get inside, the park is in this level. You get inside, and it goes down five meters, so the space really grows when you go inside. <clears throat> and, and some stuff that Nehemiah can do and uh, that I think is very, I could never do stuff like this, no. I mean, uh, <laughs> and this I, I, I say, but uh, with all my admiration, because uh, Nehemiah, I think that uh, he, he knew uh, that he uh, he could do all things that were considered mistakes, and but he he, he yeah I mean you have to understand that we are talking among architects. You no, know? we, we know about which kind of mistake in I'm talk talking about, but like like here. So if this is a, uh, this kind of roof, you cannot have a concentrate load like this. But then he made the slab uh, touch the, the cupola, I don't know the name, the dome, thank you. But actually, it's not touching. It just is faking that it's touching. So, and uh, this kind of stuff and the result is amazing. Uh, so, and in this way, so you go and, uh, he, and after that, Maybe we were allowed to do some stuff. No, Neymar, of course, is uh, I admire a lot. is a very controversial uh, person, and the, 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 you no, know, it's a man. Well, I really love his work, and I love this building as well. So, and I, I consider a big privilege to work in that. And this one is a project by a, a remarkable architect in Sao Paulo called Hino Levy. But the question here is not the building made by Hino Levy, but the remodelation in the ground level, just the ground level ba made by Paulo Mendes da Rocha in 96. In this time, we were working with him. And, and <clears throat> we, because uh, he was developing this project and, and some other project in our office MMBB at that time. And then uh, I, I think that much Im more important than the building itself was the experience of working with Paulo Mendes da Rocha. We had, uh, we were working with him and he used to come to our office. 
No, I mean, every day, the whole day, uh, 12 hours a day, uh, very intense uh, working. And, and I was the architect in charge of this uh, building, so I was uh, um, in it a lot of time. But the, the, the better gift that I have uh, by working in this project, I think, was to be more uh, close to the way that Paulo Mendes da Rocha used to talk with the team. And so, and to describe a little bit this, I brought this drawing. I apologize, the picture is really bad, but it's the only one that we have. And, and this is the only drawing produced for this project. So we had a, a, a blackboard in, in the office that was 640 meters, six uh, meters and 40 centimeters long. And uh, he designed the uh, section of the project in the scale 150 in the beginning of the project. And as we were talking about the project, he was he used to go there to change a piece, to change to to erase, to design. It's a kind of palimpsest of this project, no. And, and in the end, we took this picture, though that there are some, but this process was very, very nice. And, and to him, was very hard because it was the first project that he was doing, I think, uh, design on computer. That's very strange uh, because y you cannot see the thing being produced at the same time that uh, it is being developed. So the computer just showed the, the, the prints in the last minute almost. No, it can print all the time, but it's not easy to, to change uh, from one thing to other. No, to talk about this look like uh, last century. It, it was, nine, six. But I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very recently actually. And, uh, but how, uh, it was really nice to see the way that uh, he could talk to all of us very, um, in a way, sure about the good result that he could achieve and this kind of, and it was. So, and back to Sao Paulo, I'd like to say, pa Paulista School, uh, what is nice to me is the two words. I could take school, and to say that I, I, I found a building that was one of my most important teacher, professors. And Paulista, that I could found a city that also, uh, it was very, very important in my process. I, I think that I learned a lot uh, by experience in the, the, the uh, Sao Paulo city itself. I mean, maybe uh, the, the change to me was remarkable because the first time that I, I, I left my town to Sao Paulo, the first time that I went to Sao Paulo was to start the architecture school. And, and then it was a shocking change. And, but uh, I, I consider a very positive shocking. And I, I start to more and more to think on it or and I, I end up uh, working my master dissertation on Sao Paulo, and then the, my PhD on the how uh, uh, the experience of city act or take part in our way to think on architecture. No? So of course, I, 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 I is the same. It's not Sao Paulo as a special place. Of course, that it is a great privilege to have a school of architecture in New York City or uh, uh, the city itself, I, I'm sure that bring a lot to the student and the school. So both uh, work in a kind of collaborative way. And this place is more or less the same place in the, the showed in that picture uh, in Sao Paulo downtown, again. Oh. This is the, uh, we can see that same same place in here is that same place. And if I show you the topography of that place, 
uh, it is in here. So this triangle here was uh, where the place, the first settlement of the Sao Paulo city. So it was found here uh, and protected by two natural walls, 20 meters high walls. Is, uh, so here is the ring of the bank of this river here called Tamandatei, and here we have a kind of canyon, a gorge that for other river that open in three different ones in here. So this is the first settlement of the city and then it starts to overcome to the other side. So, but I, I won't describe too much. But I would like to say, uh, it's hard to find uh, the, this pre-existence of geography or topography when you look just the city built nowadays. But when we start to realize that there is a very rich topography underneath, uh, I think that it brings a lot of uh, explanation to architecture and to one thing that I like to say that is our uh, constructive culture. I mean, how uh, the, the, the buildings and architecture deal with the pre-existent topography and geomorphology. So, and this is uh, it's a very important feature, feature of our city. But I, I will try to just mention some ideas that come with this kind of analysis. No? If I, so here you have to, to try to follow. This is that first settlement. So a natural plateau that could f see and find a, a, a plateau in the other side of this river exactly in the same level, but so detached for 300 years, completely detached. So, but now everything is built and everything is more or less like this. So this is the first settlement. The distance in between here is 20 meters, and 20 meters is, is not just in Sao Paulo downtown. You, you, you go, uh, if you spread for outskirt of the center, you are going to find pretty much the same situation. Uh, to me, it's very clear that if you go to an Italian city and you want to find the archaeology uh, or the, uh, te testify, I don't know, the, the, the history, we, we start to dig out in the ground. In a city like Sao Paulo, you have to move not down but to outskirt. If I go to the outskirt of the city, I will find the same situation that I, we had in the beginning of the history of Sao Paulo. And, and, and so, uh, the, the, the kind of conclusion, so the, if I had to summarize in one idea, I would say that Sao Paulo is very, uh, one thing that is a very peculiar feature of the city is the thickness of the ground. It's a city where the ground level is a 20 meter thick uh, ground. It's not one, just one single surface. So this is one idea and then there are three, uh, four operations. The, the first is to view because this view was totally blocked uh, for, I would say, for social prejudice. Uh, the second operation is to transfer how to go from the bottom to the top. The third one is to infiltrate when the lower city go underneath the upper one. And the fourth one is to invade when the upper city invade the space of the lower one. All these are, are built, are in there, but it's not so easy to realize. And uh, I think that it, it, it brings us a very nice possibility to solve some of the problems of the city. And the most uh, hard problem is the density. It is a city that uh, it had like 500,000 people with this same downtown that we have nowadays with a population that was increased 40 times. But 40 times in general. If I take just ground, the downtown, I would say that it would be, I don't know the number, but uh, at easy, it would be 10 times more, like 400 times 
uh, more in density if we compare to what we had before. So I think that it's a good key. So and by looking the stuffs uh, like this, I mean topography, let me share with, I, I really like this. If I, I, I look Sao Paulo, I would say, so here is the plateau, the second plateau, the one river, the second river, this is the Sao Paulo profile. And, and, and then, uh, but if I take in a social cross section, I would say, here is the official city in historically, the poor population were expelled down into the river. If we take Rio de Janeiro, here's the formal city, and they expelled us up to the hill. So Sao Paulo, in social terms, is Rio de Janeiro upside down. <laughs> so it is <laughs> it's very, very clear. <clears throat> So, and to, to talk a little bit more about Sao Paulo, <clears throat> I would like to show you a project that's not exactly a project, but last year we were invited to take part in an art exhibition uh, that uh, were taking place in a museum called the Museum of uh, Modern Art, uh, like all museums uh, in the, of modern art. But in, in this park designed by Burle Marx and Oscar Niemeyer, the same park where I showed that uh, building before. So, and they had, the, the, the curator brought us a question because uh, the, the Museum of Modern Art is placing here underneath the canopy uh, that we have in this park, a huge uh, slab that is shading part of the park and connect this building. This park was inaugurated in 54 for, to celebrate the 450th anniversary of the city of Sao Paulo. So uh, it was a park with uh, a lot of programs for exhibitions as well. And, and this museum, the Modern Art Museum was found in Sao Paulo downtown, but then in a crisis, it was totally solved. The collection was donated to the, the University of Sao Paulo to a museum that was pre-existing, that is Contemporary Art Museum. So nowadays, the Contemporary Art Museum holds the Modern Art Collection, and the Modern Art Museum holds the Contemporary <laughs> Arts Collection, but the, it, it is in here. And the, the question that was brought is, the museum should stay in the park or should go back to the city? And so, but it is in here since 69 uh, in this place. But this park, everyone, again, know by heart. This is seven meters, the, the diameter, 70. This is 250 meters long, 50 meters wide, 150. So it's very easy to, to know these dimensions by heart. The distance between here and there is 750. So, and, and you look this, and the, the city, this is a very important avenue. It comes from the airport and goes to downtown. Uh, well, this building is 35. 5,000 square meters. The, the Sao Paulo Biennale of Art is taking place uh, in this building. No, for, uh, I don't know, 50 years. Uh, and then we thought that we, and we could imagine a museum that would be inside and outside. A museum that could be this square showed in white line. Uh, so made by four buildings, each one seven, 750 meters long, 10 meters wide, 10 meters high. Uh, not touching the ground, floating above the park. And the area of this museum is, uh, is smaller than the area that we have in here. So it could be a museum like a, a, a city in a way. No, a, a, a one place 
for the artist, uh, place for exhibition. Uh, so I will show some images very quickly. No, it was not a real project, but we designed like, so a museum that could be uh, show to the avenue that could take part in the everyday life of the city. So the idea of the construction uh, uh, is still trust in here and there, a uh, concrete column with the staircase, the egress staircase inside. So each column is 75 meters. Uh, how we show at the exhibition with that model and these images, uh, these collages, you no know, and and that's all. So a museum that could be built without change any, any path, any road, without remove any single tree, because you could make a situation like that. And well, we enjoyed a lot doing this. <laughs> and I, 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 uh, one thing that I, I really like to think is that is a kind of architecture that's very close to the idea of a city because you cannot uh, in, in, uh, hold the whole building in one glance. No, you, you start to realize by walking, by changing. So it's a whole that cannot be taken uh, by the view. Uh, so, two more project, am I fine? I don't know, I, I'm trying to. So, <clears throat> the building in Lugano that I'd like to show you, that was a very special uh, work for us. And I, I really think, so this is the site where we are. Here is Lugano downtown. Now everything is the same city. But this part used to be Casarate, now is part of Lugano. This is a, a hill, so we are here on a historical street on the bottom of this hill called Bre. And, well, we are invited by, again, a structural engineer that invited us to do this project. He used to be a professor at the Mendrizio Ac Academia. Uh, <coughs> Well, and we start to talk when he invited me to lecture there in 2004. Uh, and we did this project together. And of course that it is different. No, I had never heard about thermal bridges, this kind of odd <laughs> stuff. I mean, and <clears throat> And I always heard about how tough our Swiss uh, about rules and uh, <laughs> and you're right that uh, Brazil seems very relaxed about, but actually, of course, that what we call like uh, freedom, it's part of what we know as precarity. So it's not easy to act in, in this context. No, but uh, always like that. No, if I, uh, it's funny because when I, 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 I show some projects to a Swiss architect, no, uh, the, the comment is always, uh, but in Brazil it's very easy with that climb, uh, no rules, you can do everything you want. And if I show a project from a Swiss architect to a Brazilian one, it's always the same, come, but uh, with all those uh, money, all, all that money, so it's very easy to do what you want. <laughs> so I think that it, we are always refusing to get into the real problem. No, and, and, uh, but I think that it's very nice, this kind of uh, collaboration. I mean, I'm, I'm not working in, in Lugano as a global architect. I, I, I don't feel that, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm working in the opposite way. I'm a very local architect. No, you told me once no, that I have the coordinate of Sao Paulo imprinted in my uh, head, so I, and I, I think this is uh, true. And one thing that's very interesting to me is to considering that uh, <clears throat> there are some stuffs 
that we can do when we work together uh, with some people or in a different context, that the most interesting thing is when we, can, we are able to do what we won't be able to do in one place or other. But by combining both expertise and both uh, tradition, we it can make some new possibilities emerge. So, and, and one thing that is funny, you know, like just to joke with the lack of rules, uh, I, I like very much to say that in this building, no, that doesn't matter, the drawings. I, I, I just keep talking and change the images, <laughs> <laughs> okay? I, I can explain, that is so clear, no? You see, this is a, this is a building. <laughs> the structure is very easy. One wall in one direction, in the other direction to prevent any uh, horizontal movement. So it relieves very much the other columns that could be very thin because there is just vertical load. Uh, the slabs are everything in concrete. Uh, the concrete is amazing in, in Switzerland. But uh, uh, being less uh, slabs, as we in general like to do, and I, I really think that we built this building in the same way that we, we work in Brazil, with some uh, kind of different concerns, but uh, as clear that is not hard to be, to be considered. One very important thing about this model, it was built by Francisco Trivino is a Spanish man living in Sao Paulo, but the same man who built models for the competition of Brasilia. He's, I think, eight, six years old, and is still building models. This is one, one, 100 uh, the scale, so, and you can see how the tail, built by himself, is unbelievable. I really like this part of, and this is the building, I mean, we, we kept the ground level completely free. I remember that I, I wrote about that at, 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 at the d description to the town to get the construction license. And the owner was very worried, but how completely open? And uh, so, but uh, in the end, he agreed about. And so, one thing that I like uh, to mention when I show to my colleagues in Sao Paulo about this building, that they are very worried about uh, how tough is the law and the rules in Switzerland. And I, I like to say, in this building, we could do a lot of stuff that we are not able to do in Brazil. We are not allowed to do in Brazil. For instance, uh, the facade in wood, it's not allowed in Brazil. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we have a, 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 a rule for uh, fire that was written under a trauma. And uh, it's, uh, no, that's, it's true. And uh, it's a problem because it's not so uh, technically, it's not clear, but we are not able to do. So it's a building with the egress staircase completely open. We, we cannot do this in Sao Paulo. It's a building with one single lift, not allowed in Sao Paulo. The facade uh, in glass take the, the floor, ceiling, the, the whole high. We cannot do this in Sao Paulo because you have to have a wall one and a meter and 20 to prevent the flame from one floor to other. So uh, this is a completely forbidden building in Brazil. So this is funny because the, the law is not tougher, is more clear, I think, and, and more precise in a way, and, and some other stuff that we cannot do. And one thing that I think that emerged for the collaboration, I have to say, Andrea Pedrazzini is the name of the structure engineer, Pedrazzini engineers, uh, but I had the collaboration of two architects in Switzerland that were amazing. Uh, and uh, Nicola Bazerga and Christian Mosetti, so amazing architects, and the whole team, uh, design team, I mean the, the, the other project, the mechanical structure, everything in Switzerland. 
And uh, to me, it was a very nice experience because I had the team just to make my life easier. So this is not my every day in Sao Paulo. And I really enjoy it. But one thing that I, 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 I think that uh, emerged from this collaboration that wouldn't be possible. This uh, kind of shared roof terrace wouldn't be possible in Brazil due to the commercial issue because this space is sold and uh, would be sold in Brazil and uh, we, th there is no way. Or to make the ground level completely open. It's funny because <laughs> we, at the inauguration of this building we had 300 people you know, a party. It was a very nice inauguration in May last year. And of course, among them, a lot of architects. And, and then the most common comment that I, I, I received was, oh, how nice that you could make this ground level completely open. Just a Brazilian architect to, to be able to do that. In fact, the Brazilian architecture, I think that developed, uh, has developed this, this kind of uh, repertoire uh, pretty much in the 50s, in the 60s. No, one more time, uh, due to maybe our climatic condition. But this is completely impossible to be done nowadays, due to the social problem to other kind of stuff. But, and not so possible in Switzerland, because it's not part of the climatic uh, issue that brings some, um, and, and it's not their kind of every, they experience so, uh, and I think that this is one kind of stuff that uh, it just because we're collaborating together that we could be able to do. And of course, during the construction, uh, I was able to go there very often. Uh, I like very much is that they have their engineering office on the ground level and the tables, uh, everything in concrete, uh, uh, built, I mean, casted, uh, the formwork, everything made by the engineers the, themselves. They, they built the, the tables. We, we could design some furniture uh, like that table or this one. Uh, or the, if you look the plans, no, that I didn't show, but uh, so this is a bathroom. There, uh, one more bathroom. There, if you look the plan, the walls is one centimeter thick, and that's real. I mean, because it's one single glass that make the, the, the bathroom. And so it's very simple as finishing the same kind of material that we use in Brazil, the terrazzo. Terrazzo Veneziano, how do you call this in here? Yeah, so. But the difference is that the guy came from Venice, in, <laughs> really. And, and, and uh, it, it's very nice. So these pieces, we designed the whole thing. It's, uh, well, I really like the condition that we could work in this project. <coughs> so last project. It's a very small one, <laughs> and I will try to be very brief. And it's very special because I mentioned that in the beginning, I, 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 everything that I had to do was those projects to my dear friend from my town. Uh, and, but I, I think that I, I was trained by that first experience uh, to be able to design and uh, far away from the construction site. And this condition, I think, that forged the way that I, 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 I designed. And in a way that exactly due to the fact that I was far away from the construction, I became closer and closer to the constructions uh, as a topic. Because I had to test what the, uh, how effective was the drawing. So that, I think that was very helpful when I did that project in Switzerland or one more project that we built in Portugal. Uh, I, I think that it was very helpful, the first work that I, or the condition in, in which we had to work in the beginning. No, I, I very soon, in that time when I was working at my town, 
we had no computer, so I had to design by, by hand everything I put on the mail. And I, I remember that I, I, had to, I had to write the, to address the envelopes to the workers. And I, 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 so I, I, I really knew that I was designed to the carpenter, to the uh, men who were going to build the, the steel uh, reinforcement. So they were the, 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 our drawings were really addressed to them. And, and this work, so one thing that was remarkable is very recent. We had just finished this, this work. Uh, is very close to my office. <laughs> so it was a work that I could do, go every day by walking 15 minutes walking. So in the end of the process, it was a hell. But <laughs> I, I, I like, I enjoy very much. So again, the most important rivers, we have more than 70 rivers in Sao Paulo. These are the most metropolitan ones. This is the place where we are, we have our project. Here is the University of Sao Paulo. Here's a jockey, the jockey club. Uh, so <clears throat> this is our office. Here is the site. If you look at the picture, so the site is this kind of uh, green area, not so green, but surrounded by uh, some uh, more green air, but and everything surrounded by high-rise buildings. But why this neighborhood was kept uh, lower? Of course, that is due to restriction of uh, law. So six meter is the maximum high in here. And I was uh, <coughs> the people. Uh, the owners, they, they just sent me a mail. Uh, they told that they, they, they had uh, found our stuff on uh, some publication, internet. They really loved. They, they, but they, they were sure that the, their project is very small for <laughs> to be interesting to, for us. And, and I, I replied and said that I would love to talk with them. So they came to the, our office. And they brought this drawing. So this is their drawing. And, <laughs> and I built their drawing. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. I mean, I, 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 sometimes I like to say, of course, that this uh, it was not to be repeated here. But I like very much to say that in, in my school of architecture, for instance, no, that our our activity was not related to have ideas. What we, we, our speciality is to know how to build things. Of course, that is not like this. But in a way, uh, and of course that ideas, we, we have to be very uh, careful about what kind of stuffs we are going to build. You know? But I mean, I, I, I can't put uh, the knowledge about know what to do or how to build to uh, if I agree with the proposal that arrived for us. So they brought this, they, they bought a site in that neighborhood, it's a very small site, 10 meters wide, 25 meters long, to build a garden and a swimming pool. That's what they, they would like to do. They live in an apartment in Sao Paulo, they would like to stay in their apartment, but they would like to have a place to go in the weekends. I mean, to not be totally jammed in the traffic in the weekend to go to the beach and like everyone. So he is a professor of philosophy at the, architect, uh, at the philosophy school at the University of Sao Paulo. She's a very well-known fashion consultant, but a very special to me fashion consultant that uh, he likes to say that the most sophisticated thing, uh, the chic, the expression that she used, is to be civilized. So I really like the, the way that she think on, on, he, on her achievement. And, and well, they had that idea, but they were very worried about the sun. Swimming pool was the main, uh, 
figured in that program. And they, they were placing the pool in here, but six meter high with no setbacks, and east and west. So this was, the, if, they pull the, if they put the pool here, it would be shade the whole afternoon. If they replace it here, it would be shade the whole morning. And they didn't know how to react. They, they placed the pool in the side, they changed the, the position. So they brought the idea and they brought the question. The question was, uh, we are not sure if we should displace more to east or more to west. And I said, no, oh, it's fine. You, you can decide if you're going to have sun from 10 to 1, for 11 to 2. But, but the, the, the period of sun will be the same. But I said, I, I think it's a very good idea to displace the pool, but not to one side or other. Let's displace up. They asked how much. I said, six meters. And they, a little bit worried, they asked why. And I said, because the surface for light proposal at that site is six meter high. And the surface was defined by law again. So if we had the pool at that high, we would be uh, sunny the whole day. So and that's what we built. So this is the pool. The, the, even the inclination of this is to bring more light to the garden underneath. Uh, the pool is being counterweight for a solar, by a solarium on the other side that whole, uh, hang uh, a, a slab here to make a small apartment to then, and uh, it's a 30 square meters to then, 30 square meters to the housekeeper, and this is the project. Uh, so one thing that I like is the idea that the, the site is, uh, the program is very like a weekend house, but placed in a very metropolitan area. And one thing that I think that highlights very much this metropolitan condition is the fact that in the line of the site, right above the pool, is the uh, fly, I don't know, corridor. corridor. No, it means uh, airplanes arriving from Rio, each five minutes are approaching, they're 800 meters high in, in at this place. So the ground level plan, the uh, the intermediate level where you have the, their apartments, the housekeeper apartment, and the uh, swimming pool level. So, of course, we had the, the water tank there, the main water tank in there, and all the machines in here. The way that we made the water circulate was not inside the pipes all the time, but we can make the water be poured from one edge and other of the swimming pool. To, so the pool is in, in the garden in the, all the time, I mean, in, in every place. You can f uh, feel the water, the, 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 how it sounds and uh, everything. And the garden <coughs> is also invading all the, the, the spaces. No? The, we, we had a, a very good uh, landscape designer how Pereira in this project, so how it was, <coughs> how we made it. One thing that I know is very interesting to me is uh, to consider about a project like that is the fact that we, they didn't know exactly how to name the project. And it's very nice to design something that we don't know how to name. Uh, because you have to start like in a, so if I said, no, it's just a pool and a, and a garden, but the pool and a garden are a kind of uh, complementary uh, programs when we think about the house. So, but how can I suppress the, 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 the core of a program and the, what remains uh, doesn't uh, like, uh, disappear uh, or does not uh, uh, be sunk in, the, in a, a very hard melancholy. I don't know how to say. Now, how can I suppress the house and just to keep the pool and the garden and, and, and this pool and the garden uh, keep their reason to exist? 
So this is why I think that this project is, uh, was interesting to be designed. <coughs> it's a project that, that is in the counter flow of everything, not just in the traffic, no? We, while we are always trying to get the maximum FAR, here the idea was to get the maximum uh, garden rate, uh, I don't know. It's, it was different. And the, the landscape designer is very proud because he told me that he had twice the area of the site as garden. So the transparency is very important because both body on the top, the pool and the, the solarium, they are like a huge pergola, no? and the, the garden on the bottom is very light. The, again, of course, uh, the climate allowed us to have a kind of partially shaded garden. And so this is, the garden is, is new, but is, is dense in a way, no? And so the, the kind of detail uh, uh, the joke is that the tail that we like most is the lack of the tail. No, but to make a, a, a single glass panel, temperate glass panel to slide with anything in a, actually is a, it's a piece of a profile of steel that we, we cast on the edge of the slab and then the, it's very easy to solve the, the problem. Uh, of the no. Okay, last image. Thank you so so much. <laughs>
more precarious than any other thing. I mean, that the, the idea that we have nowadays that everything that we are doing is a kind of transition, you know, that uh, n n anything is, is done, a building that uh, is lasts uh, here for 300 years, it, it is a different stuff every day. I mean, uh, the notion we have about our own body, for instance, is completely different, although uh, it uh, every day. So the, in 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 a way, the the meaning of the world, the whole world, is changing all the time. So in this sense, I think that uh, this idea, the same idea of uh, unconcluded, you no, know, is uh, what we are doing. Is so always unconcluded, and the work is. And of course, uh, I I I agree with you. Maybe. Uh, but I, I, I mentioned about the precarity of a context as a thing that uh, should not be um, uh, uh, like misunderstood as freedom. So th this is a kind of, uh, I think, in a, in, a, in a different meaning. But I, I, I also believe that by living in, a, uh, in some context, of course, some contests uh, make more uh, clear some, uh, we all live in the same world. No, it's, uh, but I mean, the, I think that some uh, contexts put more light in some features and other context in a different feature, no? And I think about my profession nowadays, I, one of the most challenging thing, mostly when I think about uh, young architects, I think that the most challenging thing is that we, we, we maybe have like lots of research to do stuff, but a lack of meaning. And this is very, so there is no reason to do and this is, is one thing that is the most precarious thing. So if, if, we, if we think about, uh, if we dedicate a part of our uh, work uh, trying to find uh, what is the meaningful stuff to be built, no, of course there is no answer. No, it's always one possible answer, but we could find a thousand of other different answers. So. But I agree, but your question is, is uh, hard to me, it's something to think about. <laughs> Some other question? Uh, first of all, thanks very much for the very thorough lecture. Uh, secondly, I wanted to bring up one beautiful quote that uh, you mentioned, a design a building as a city and design a city as a building. Uh, today one might add as a building of legal, uh, security, economic protocols. And, and I wanted to ask, do you really think that it is possible for an architect to design a city now and in the future? And furthermore, to build uh, a city if there is this entire other dimension of building that we're not really engaging? Well, oh, not so sure if I understood, if, if I considered that nowadays it's possible for an architect to think about design a city. I don't, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, uh, it's not because, uh, I, I mean, because this, uh, to me, is totally uh, changed. I mean, I, I, first I, I don't believe too much uh, what's the meaning about to design a whole city nowadays. Uh, second, I think that the way that we perceive the world is not uh, like the, the same. I think, I think that we are, if I think about form, I, 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 for us uh, nowadays, I mean, uh, we are much more uh, interest about open form than a closed one. So uh, I think that the problem of the city is much more related to image than drawing. You know, uh, uh, the meaning uh, than the, 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 the feature. 
And so uh, I think the way that we perceive a city nowadays is much closer to the idea of an environment than the, the idea of a construction. So we think about the world as a, a game of forces. I don't know exactly how to do or to say that in English. No, and not as something that could be exactly predicted. We, we, were, we have to be able to predict it, but do you know that this prediction is a very dynamic action? So it's like to think if we really were able to dominate the nature, we could like change a piece of stone, a very small one, in a beach, and you are going to flood whole cities or to create new a new beat because uh, everything is so connected and we know that they, 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 it is. So uh, I, I, I don't think that nowadays we would be, there is any meaning about trying to design a city like we used to do uh, not so long ago, no, yeah. maybe but if I think about Brasilia, no. Uh, and I, I like very much Brazil. I think that was a very important move in, movement in Brazil. I, I really like, but I, that there is the, I mean, I'm proud about Brazil, but there is one thing that to me is very disturbing about. You know, how can we design a 500,000 people city? Where, 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 those people before. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, no, it, it's, it's very, uh, it, because in, in, in the social context of Brazil, uh, the understanding of this question is very hard. So, how can you move 500,000 people? So, I, would prefer to think in different terms. Please. Um, you said that uh, you tell your students that architects shouldn't have ideas, they should know how to build. Um, right, but, uh, but yet uh, your work is all about ideas. I mean, you know how to build, but clearly, I mean, it's just an incredible generosity of ideas about everything. So I wanted to, it's a provocation, and I wanted to know, are there ideas that are good to have? And it's a kind of boundary. I wanted you to talk about that boundary as an architect. Yes. No. Thank you for the comment. Of course, I, I agree. I mean, I, I just uh, I, I said, no, this is not the right context to repeat that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, I, I was addressing <coughs> Uh, a kind of, uh, I would say, of myth, myth, may I say? Mm. Yes. In my context. Know that uh, uh, the myth that is like uh, feeding uh, a, an idea that uh, the question about design a building is to wait a very, uh, like a genius idea that would uh, emerge. So it's much more, of course, you know, we are always, uh, uh, I, I like very much the, uh, the, the, the word idea, what I, uh, I, I like to think is that the idea, uh, it lacks specificity. And I, I, I think that the idea is not uh, um, a, a, Sorry, the lack of words. But uh, the, 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 the idea is not a uh, prerogative, may I say, of architects. Uh, so uh, ideas we share among mm -hmm. all professions. Mm -hmm. uh, so what made us architect is not the fact that we have ideas. It's, uh, it's a very related to educational uh, process, I think. But I totally agree. I, I, I prefer maybe words like, I like very much the word imagination. No, I think uh, image, how image take place in the process of design. Uh, wh what is, are the meaning 
of uh, one funny thing that I could say about the pool. If I say, no, let's do a pool six meter high. So uh, it's very strange and the people would refuse. Uh, but why? I never seen an elevated pool. Because the word pool, if I just pronounce the word swimming pool, our imagination, imagination is start to dig out the ground. <laughs> you know, it is. It's a, 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 an image that is uh, <coughs> straight linked to this operation. So the pool as a lake, the pool as uh, so a, a, a piece of a lake. Or, but if I mention the word that is exactly the same thing, water tank, it's fine. So <laughs> six six meter high, you know. But this, to me, is very nice. And and then if I said let's build a pool six meter high, no, you are crazy. But if I say no, let's swimming in the water tank, <laughs> it's fine. So why we we? But as construction, they are exactly the same stuff. The the the, the just the way that we use. So I, I like very much to think on ideas in these terms, but how some images are linked to some construction, what's the meaning of a construction, uh, how to change this. That's why I think it's very interesting to design an architecture that we don't know how to name and this kind of, because we are free of this. And, and well, but you're right. I think it's a good moment to perhaps end. Thank you very much for having us here. The last part, I mean, when you explain the game, the last.